everyone, welcome back to Lisa's Study Guides. Today we're going to go through Extinction by Hanny Raisin. If you're studying this text, then this video is obvious for you, bleh, obviously for you. So thanks for tuning in and let's just get started. Hanny Raisin's Extinction begins with Harry Jewell, coal mining CEO who has hit an endangered tiger corp. At the Wildlife Rescue Center, Dr. Piper Ross, a zoologist, attempts to save the injured tiger quoll. The two immediately hit it off, and after the euthanasia of the tiger quoll, Harry seeks to preserve the species by donating two million to Piper's supervisor, Heather Dixon Brown, head of a university research department. Harry has a short sexual relationship with Piper, who experiences confusion with her hot and cold boyfriend Andy, and then later with Dixon Brown, who has just gotten divorced. We learn that Andy's behaviour is because of his terminal illness, GSS, and his secret is tangled in a web of other lies throughout the novel. Piper pretends that she and Harry have never slept together, and Dixon Brown the same. The truth eventually unfolds by the end of the novel, with Andy and Piper united together in their relationship and ready to face their future together. Themes, mortality. The title Extinction is a strong nod to the theme of mortality. While the extinction of animals is most obvious, Raisin brings to light the extinction or mortality in humans and how we respond and deal with our own impending death and the death of others. Juxtaposed with the impeding death of the tiger quoll at the start of the play, we see how some humans face death with compassion. Despite looking nervous, Piper asks Harry, are you all right? And tell me about Errol Flynn to deal with the situation and keep his mind elsewhere. Piper is shocked at Andy's apparent lack of compassion when he euthanizes the tiger quoll without a second thought, despite his training and expertise. I don't believe he just did that. We needed to at least try. When Andy starts developing symptoms from his illness, he reacts by pushing away Piper, refusing to share the exact details as to why he can't continue an otherwise happy relationship. He doesn't want his death to affect Piper. This worried Piper, it just leads to sadness, showing his actions are an attempt to prevent Piper from experiencing pain and suffering. In one of the most poignant lines of the play, Andy states that he never once wanted never once wanted to live my life as a dying man, highlighting how humans have an inner resilience that enables us to live and seize life, even in the face of death. Isolation. Relationships make up a major part of Extinction's plot. Loneliness and therefore isolation drive multiple characters to partake in superficial interactions just to feel like they have companionship. Piper's relationship with Andy is strained. Harry's marriage breaks down because of his wife's infidelity with Damien Gore. And Dixon Brown's divorce results in all three characters yearning for more substance in their lives. Heather states, I'm just over being single. Within one another, Harry and Piper and Harry and Dixon Brown develop short, fleeting sexual relationships to deal with their isolation and abandonment. For humans, Raisin seemingly argues that we need to find meaningful and fulfilling relationships. When Andy rebuffs Piper, it causes both of them emotional distress and pain, whereas their resolution at the conclusion of the play is celebrated as peace finally comes about when Andy and Piper decide to share and both take part in dealing with Andy's GSS and future. Integrity of the human condition. Before we continue on, let me firstly explain to you what integrity means. I know that for a lot of students, integrity is a word that's difficult to understand. And even for myself, when I was younger, I found it really hard to grasp what integrity really meant because if you look up the dictionary definition, it's this kind of vague definition that's not particularly helpful. So here's an analogy to help you understand what integrity is. Imagine a building. It's built upon parts that give it a solid and strong foundation. Bricks, cement, beams, concrete. Look, I am not an engineer or an architect, so I don't specialize in this stuff, but work with me here. Now, each of these components are different parts of what makes up your morals. To tell the truth, to keep promises, to not cheat, 
whatever it is. When you stick to these morals, you have integrity. Your building is strong, it upholds itself. But when you don't stick to these morals, that building is no longer structurally sound. It's weakened, corrupted, and potentially even at risk of collapsing. This is when you risk your integrity or fail to uphold your integrity. This is why you'll see lots of synonyms for the word integrity like honesty, righteousness, and honor, because these all relate to whether or not you're staying true to yourself and preserving your building. At the heart of extinction is a question of ethics. What does it take to stick to our morals? Why do we break our morals? How do we redeem ourselves? Initially, Dixon Brown remarks Harry's funds as dirty money and that her university is not a casino. However, she soon realizes that ideological purity won't deliver major outcomes to the forest and concedes to the million dollar project fund, forgoing her principles. Her actions are in stark comparison with Andy, who snaps at Dixon Brown after breaking up with Piper. I don't want to be with someone who would even contemplate environmental vandalism on the scale you two are planning. Reason leaves us to contemplate, is our integrity at the risk of extinction? Is it okay to risk our integrity and when? These are all questions for you to explore and there isn't necessarily one right answer. I just wanted to give a big shout out to all the teachers out there. I know that a lot of teachers are showing my videos in classes and you know, exposing me to new students. So I want to thank you very much in doing so. I really appreciate it. And please get in touch with me. I love making connections with teachers and creating resources that, you know, will help you guys. So this is not just for teachers, but also for students. You guys let me know what you find helpful. And so I will make sure that I'll go ahead and try to make content that is going to be relevant and as beneficial for you guys as possible. If you found this particular video helpful, then you might also find my mailing list helpful. It's just linked in the description box below where you can sign up. And every Monday I send out new emails to students with answers to your questions, new resources available, and just keeping you updated with the latest tips and tricks for VC English. That's it for now, and I'll chat to you guys next week. Bye!